Hey, everybody. It's, uh, 7.05. And in the middle of the coronavirus, there's not that much reason to wake up. But today, we're going to go head-to-head -head Apple Watch versus Whoop Strap. This one tells time, and the other one does not. But they've both been tracking all night what sleep is like, so we're going to get into those and see what happened. And then I'm going to go exercise a lot, and I'm going to do as much as I can and try to burn as many calories as I can and see how accurate they are compared to one another. And if I can find uh, my third chest strap, I might even throw that on. So we'll have some good comparison. Uh, promise I'd throw this out. And I haven't seen a, a Whoop versus Apple Watch comparison yet. And I've seen some pretty big discrepancies between the two in my own training. So... Okay, let's take a look at the Whoop app itself. This is the home screen for the app. It contains all the basic information on sleep, recovery, HRV, calorie expenditure, and strain for the day. As I swipe to the right, uh, this specific screen loads for recovery and sleep performance, as you can see there. And then when you swipe down, this screen is a graph comparison of the times that I stay in bed every night and tells me whether or not I've been consistent. This is something I've had to work on instead of having many different sleep and wake times, which helps with recovery because it follows a more normal sleep-wake schedule or helps your circadian rhythm actually stay in rhythm. Finally, we're going to move back to the home screen uh, where we see I'm starting the day off at 63% recovery and an HRV reading of 144, which for me is actually pretty good. <clears throat> Alright, time to get at it. Okay, first things first. Breakfast. Managed to find some oats, so I'm gonna weigh everything out. Energy expenditure, if I can um, still keep. Okay, I gotta make coffee. Mm. Makes it taste delicious and. Helps mix really well. Makes it all together into delicious goodness. Mm. So I'm getting ready to head out for this hike. Uh, I'm actually going to charge my Apple Watch for a couple of minutes because the battery take it goes about 50% of the battery uh, overnight. Well, I was wearing it first. <laughs> Got to get water before this. Always important, especially since I just ate breakfast. Okay, so I'm going for a ruck this morning, and some of you guys might be like, oh, well, I saw a go ruck on TV or um, something like that, you know, at the CrossFit Games, whatever. But this is what I'm actually using is my old military ruck, and it's a little bit bigger, and the biggest difference is that it has a frame on it that looks like this. So it's a full actual frame with a hip pad and a hip belt, so it goes not just around your shoulders, but around your hip and helps you stabilize. Um, so I've got a bunch of side pockets and I use this on both my deployments, so it's pretty legit. Uh, but I'll check in with you guys when I get to the trailhead. Quick update, don't worry, I'm sitting in a stoplight. So trails that are open are being really hard to find and I'm kind of burning daylight here. Uh, it's now 8.38 and I should have been on the trail 20 minutes ago. So we're just gonna go with something, uh, worst case scenario, I just hike up the hill by my house twice. Okay, so officially wasted uh, 15, 20 minutes and basically ended up right back where I started. So now I'm just gonna be hiking some side trails. Um, and on the road, I have my ruck on. It makes a lot of noise. It squeaks because uh, it's duct taped <laughs> and it has been for years. So that's pretty much what's happening. Um, so I started on my phone on the Whoop app, uh, the Whoop activity uh, just like you can do on the Apple Watch and so that's what I'm starting on my Apple Watch right now as well because both of them will automatically pick up periods of activity but they're not always reliable and they don't always start when you want them to or something like that so that will help okay so first things first you want to buy an activity tracker but you don't know which one to get you know that you need something uh, that can actually tell time Maybe you want to get your text messages on it. Maybe um, you really only care about 
you know, a couple of things, being able to listen to music and leave your phone at home, something like that. Um, well, then really the Apple Watch is one of your only options. I do believe that Garmin and uh, Polar have options that will allow you to have smart connectivity to your phones. Um, not all of them support Apple the way an Apple Watch does to the iPhone and all of your devices. I think the exclusive ability to share everything between all of your devices to be able to stream music from your iTunes, from your iCloud, um, have all access to those devices is what makes the Apple Watch so useful. Um, but today we're looking at how accurate is it? It tracks fitness. Um, it has a bunch of different activities. They're always making updates so that you have new things. I mean, it has everything from underwater basket weaving to flipping through the sky to I think yoga and meditation um, for heart rate tracking and stuff like that. So pretty much every option. Whoop also has the same, but they're through the app. I often get asked by people, oh, what's that thing on your right wrist? And uh, <laughs> I look like the idiot because I have one on each wrist. Um, and they go, oh, well, what's the time? And if I've forgotten to wear my Apple Watch, I can't tell them. And they go, well, what is this? And then I have to tell them it's an activity tracker. And uh, the main thing, most important part is that they both use green dot sensors. They have uh, two lenses on either that make contact in the skin um, against your wrist. It's a decent point to make contact because there's not a whole lot of tissue and um, tendons and so forth right under the skin so it has easy access to where you can see your pulse and so forth. I flip mine around for activities when I'm doing things like with a kettlebell or something you don't want to break it. Um, I've broken two of these before but I'm a founding member with Whoop. I invested in the very first one when it came out I don't know how many years ago now um, and I've been really happy with them so far but if you are unsure about fitness trackers or you've had bad experiences with them in the past, I highly recommend you check out Andy Galpin's book, Dr. Andy Galpin, PhD and director of the Human Performance Lab at Cal State Fullerton. Um, he has put out a book with Brian McKenzie um, on, on, it's called Unplugged, and it's an excellent descriptor of the all the tracking that we do these days. Um, he talks a lot about leaving some of it behind, not getting too obsessed with metrics, um, but using them to help you guide your practice, improve your performance, and just understand things better. So that's essentially what I've done is gather data. Um, I try to use it as a, as a good idea for on days when it tells me my strain is really high, that I'm happy that I've been moving a lot. Ah, this hill went up fast, geez. <laughs> anyway, um, so they've, both been good. Um, the Apple Watch is crucial because you need to tell time. I do run with with that and be able to hook up my headphones Bluetooth to my watch without having um, having to take my phone with me, which is really awesome. And then you can still, I can track the run that I'm doing. I can listen to music. I can swim with it. There aren't Bluetooth headphones that work in the water yet because water cancels out Bluetooth signals, but I'm sure that'll come along. So, Accuracy is what I'm looking for today. I've seen days where my whoop will tell me that I am at like an 18 day strain. So the maximum for a whoop day strain is 21. And they say that if you go to the strain monitor and <laughs> you say, I want to, I want to develop a 21 strain today, they will say this requires a continuous maximal heart rate for 24 hours. Good luck. That is actually what it says. I will screenshot that and add it to the video because, <laughs> but then somehow I can get to a 20.6 every day, 0.4 away. And that's with, I don't know, 10, 12 hour days of being relatively active. For me, that means coaching, personal training, uh, my own fitness, sometimes moving stuff. Um, I have resting heart rate is super low and my max capacity is very high. So I have the ability to function in a big variety of thresholds. Um, I can hold 70% all day long and be just fine and it's not going to be a detriment to my heart. It's strong enough to handle it. Um, and at the same time, I can hit super high numbers. I can be up at almost 200 beats a minute that I've recorded on this um, and not have to worry about exploding my heart, although it probably feels like it. I'm curious to see uh, how this hike pans out. We'll check in after I finish. I'm going almost straight uphill and uh, right now, Whoop is reading, or excuse me, Apple Watch is reading 
114 beats a minute. Coming to cams. What up, big guy? Hey! All up in the place. So it's been uh, like two and a half hours, and according to tracking and so forth, I recorded another activity of nine strain while I was just getting ready and packing the truck to go. So that means I'm at 2,700 calories, and uh, my Apple Watch is only at about 800 calories. So we're gonna look at total expenditure and a couple of things, but time to go get the bike ready. Good, how are you? I'm good. So good to see you. Good to see you as well. This ain't six feet, but it doesn't matter. Whatever. What We're are you doing? We're die from it. We're all good. I know, I know. Wow. What is all this? Oh, we're gonna make some salsa. Salsa? Yeah, buddy. What? Yeah. Oh, we got the chips for it. Oh, yeah. And the Ready to go. Yeah, buddy. You guys getting all gourmet in here and everything. Dude. That's what Cam said. Dude. It's been nuts. That's good. Cam been showing you our meals? Mm hmm. Mm. What's in there? Yum. It's going to be delish. Oh, yeah. Some dinner for us. Oh, 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 yeah. Wow. Look at oh, that. Look at that. Look at that beer. Yum. Yeah, buddy. Mm, mm. Is there beer in there? Yeah, no, there's wine. Ooh. It smells savory. Yeah, buddy. Wonderful. Where's hey, Where's the man up? himself? He went up, um, up to the pool. Okay. What? I can't see. Gotta go find this guy. Hey guys. Hi. What's going on? Oh, you see my pants? I did. No, those. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's like we're like you know growing illegal shit, but it's really just uh -huh. beets and radishes. Wow. Who cares? You guys are so industrious. Oh, yeah. So amazing. Whoa. Oh boy. Look at this. Hanging out in the hammock. Boom. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Home staycation. And yeah, when you can't leave the house, you know, just make the backyard. Perfect. Yeah. Since they shut down all the yeah. campgrounds. I, I made popcorn last night with a freaking whirly pop on the barbecue. What? And like I, I put a little cast iron cup in the freaking campfire and like put, like heated up some butter you know. Ah, oh, that God. sounds amazing. We're like getting gourmet, but it's like we can't leave the damn house. What is this? And now you're frying pepper. Are you frying things on? So no, you do the pork tenderloins and then you put the peppers directly down on top of the coal, so it kind of smokes it. Ooh. You do the same thing with steaks and rosemary. Yum. Works amazing. Got some chicken salad for a snack. Heading over to the bike shop, and ready to go. Yes, I am hungry. I can't burn more calories if I don't eat more calories. So, you know, that's how it's gonna go. But what are you doing now? Looking at my Apple Watch versus my Whoop, and seeing which one is more accurate. Because often days the Whoop says I burn like many thousands of calories, and the Apple Watch says I burn like many hundred. So you gotta ask yourself the question: like, how is your Apple Watch measuring burned calories versus how is the Whoop? measuring its burn calories mm -hmm. right? is it just heart rate is it is it actually like sensing some stuff is it like is it doing bmi stuff the sense you know like the electrical pulse stuff well i'm glad you asked cameron what a good question <laughs> for anybody who might be wondering indeed so they both happen to use ppg um which is polyphoto something i can't remember what it stands for science uh yep hashtag science happens to be the method by which they measure and height, height, activity levels. Um, Whoop gives you a strain. Apple does not. Apple gives you your total calorie expenditure. I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> There's a man in the road that looks like he is burning some calories. Yeah, old Wearing dude. all black. So the two metrics are based on largely the same things, but the way they measure seems to be different. So 
I'm gonna put some some research on that down below because that's gonna be important to look at. Oh. MVP Pizza next to them, they're doing buy one get one free any size any topping until kids go back to school, which is already confirmed. <laughs> kids are going to back to school this year, so literally the wow. rest of the year is that's buy one, a get lot one of free. pizza. So it turns out I'm not actually allowed to go into the bike shop because of their COVID policies. So Cam's gonna run in, get the parts I need, and then I'm gonna pay for them through the door. Just like this. Here's my card. Thanks. <laughs> okay, we're back. We got the parts. New tube. New pedals. Let's throw them on. Pump. 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 We're gonna go right hills and see how close I can get to max heart rate and which monitor is gonna measure better or more accurately about <laughs> what grade of hill we have to ride in it's order to yeah. max out my heart rate. Yeah, is Tom human or is he a machine? Basically is the question. We may have a third rider, yeah? Yeah, not until later though. Not okay. until after four. So we'll have to do some fitness in the meantime. I'm currently at a 16.2 day strain, according to Whoop, and I'm currently at uh, 543 move calories for my Apple Watch, but I am at 7,700 steps, and hmm, I'll have to check in and see what total calorie expenditure is. Be Ooh, this is very nice. Here. I, I, I thought about it, and then was like, that's stupid. Where would I go? Okay, so hanging out, bikes are fixed, uh, just waiting. I'm gonna either determine to do a workout or go for a first bike ride and then go for a second one later. Um, I haven't checked in, I'm at about a 16.6 day strain on my whoop and um, I'm currently at 579 out of 830 move calories on my Apple Watch. And I just wanna do a little literature review on why these may or may not be accurate. So what I have here is two chest straps, um, which are known to be the most accurate. This is a Garmin, this is a Sunto. Both of these are Bluetooth, can connect to either a, um, the respective watch device that would come with it um, and it would do the reading or this Sunto is Bluetooth, can connect to your phone and give you readings. Um, one of the most important things about why these can or cannot be accurate in certain ways is for one, um, they use what's called PPG sensors. And these sensors simply use the green lights on the bottom uh, that come through so you can open up these and you can see that green light that blinks to register thousands of times a second um, through the skin into to try to get a uh, reading on your heart rate through the veins as I mentioned before because it's um, a wrist bound device or even even if I had the strap up here on my arm or something like that where there's uh, a pulse um, something close to a vein where it would read it's still farther away from the heart which is why these straps tend to be so accurate this data point uh, is gathering information right at your heart so it's not only is it closer, it's right over to, uh, so it's more likely to be able to read the actual electrical signal that comes from uh, your heart, giving you a more accurate heart rate, and then being able to calculate HRV, for example, or um, other measurements that you might use. Now, the WHOOP advertises itself as an HRV gathering device, um, which is how they base their strain scores. So your HRV goes up and down. Higher readings are typically means your autonomic uh, nervous system is more recovered, is more able to um, go through things because we have exercise puts you in a sympathetic nervous system state and parasympathetic is when you're coming back off of that. Autonomic nervous system is what's always governing your breathing, your heart rate, all these um, normal, normal regulation that isn't affected by exercise, your organs and so forth. Um, whereas sympathetic, if I start uh, exercising really hard, blood is gonna to flow to my legs, my heart rate's gonna go up to make sure that goes through. Blood is gonna drain out of anywhere that I'm not using and try to go through that. So as your heart rate increases, um, these will have to take accurate measurements more often and make sure that it can read just as many times. Whereas this is, again, closer to your heart, so it should have a better reading. 
Um, another part of this is the actual heart rate interval itself. So if you think about looking at a cardiogram um, or an EKG, an ECG echocardiogram uh, that you would get at the doctor where they hook up leads and they can measure exactly what your QRS complex looks like. That's when you read the waves, it has Q, R, and S. And every time they go up, there's a space between the two top ones. That's the R to R interval. Um, and that is a measure of accurate HRV because it will determining the distance between those two as they vary is the heart rate variability. How much uh, farther apart they are or how close together they are with those intervals, right? They'd be closer together as your heart is beating more rapidly. Um, and so your ability to recover and your heart rate to go back down and return to a resting state more quickly is obviously better for aerobic um, health and would indicate a higher level of fitness. Well, neither of these devices can accurately transmit that data. And Apple software limits, it will not transmit that data to a third party app. So even if you download HRV Pro on your phone, you have it on your um, Apple Watch, Apple will only send that data that it gathers on your heart rate that it would take measurements from to estimate your HRV to Apple Health. So Apple Health will give you a HRV reading. I often find the two between these is very different. I will have a very high HRV here and a kind of middle of the line HRV on my Apple Watch. Um, but so that's something to keep in mind is that what I talked about at the beginning of this is use them as kind of a guide, gathering data and, and getting estimations. If you want full scientific lab data, not only do you have to not be moving to get accurate HRV, so it means you can't exercise, or if you do, you gotta hold that arm completely static. This lead needs to be attached completely. It has to be very accurate. Your arm can't move. Well, how are you gonna do a max effort running test holding your arm, something like that, and trying to get good heart rate data? It's not gonna happen. Um, I promise I've done VO2 maxes on the treadmill. It's awful. You're already attached to a bunch of equipment and it's really difficult to do. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So don't have huge expectations of what your tracker is gonna give you and be so mad that it's um, not accurate unless you wanna spend thousands of dollars for laboratory grade equipment that you wanna wear around all day. Um, but if you're looking for something that can tell you, yeah, your heart rate went up and you moved today and you worked out and hey, good job, you you know hit your 5,000 or your 10,000 steps and um, you have some capacity in your heart rate and so forth. And um, the WHOOP gives you, a, it's a great idea of knowing subjective or uh, more objectively than your own um, subjective measurements that you hit high strain levels. And maybe it's a good idea to try to back off and not go super hard every single day. Um, it is a relatively decent measurement of sleep, which is mostly what I use it for um, and what I'd recommend having something like this for. But uh, gonna hit a workout, gonna do some intervals. I think I'm gonna do power cleans and uh, a little 40 on, 20 off. And then we're gonna go for a bike ride. Then we're gonna come back, eat dinner. Oh, well, no fires here, just coronavirus. <laughs> just kidding. No coronavirus, all fitness. So, yeah, I'm gonna do that, and um, I'm curious to see how high I can get my score on the Whoop today, um, but keeping those things in mind. Okay, let's do fitness. Okay, just finished a quick little 40 on, 20 off, a couple of rounds, um, Metcon thing, and tracking on my Whoop. I've already gained two activity strains today where I was just getting my things and leaving the house and then driving that are equivalent to the strain I accumulated from hiking this morning. Three miles with 35, 40 pounds on my back. And now I'm guessing that my activity strain from doing 12 minutes of high intensity exercise is again going to be lower than my strain leaving the house getting my backpack ready so either <laughs> it gives me great anxiety to leave the house or um something else is going on so okay now that i'm warm time to go for a bike ride slam some eggs and some protein and then uh, we'll go mm. okay 
spandexed, chamois buttered. Here we go, four bike rides. It's gonna be really hard because I don't have a mount, so I'm just gonna have to check in when I feel like not dying. All right, let's do it. We're just into our warm up, way up here on the hill. And uh, now we're gonna hit, how far are we going? Uh, probably 15, 20. So I don't feel that out of breath, but I just worked out and we just went right into this bike ride. Slimed the protein shake, never got to the eggs. So <laughs> we'll see, I'm recording uh, currently only 104 beats a minute yeah, we're like three miles. on my Apple Watch. So easy day, uh, we'll keep going, check back in. Seventeen mile ride, and we are done. Oh boy! All right, so back from the ride, uh, felt pretty good, solid. We ran into some winds. I got to pick up some speed, tried to push some of the hills and uh, pick up my heart rate, see what happened but neither tracker has registered anything over about 150 BPM. So um, I'm not expecting a whole lot of strain out of it. I'm at a 19.8 on the whoop and um, it's not really coming out with much. So in terms of uh, total exertion for the day, I'm not hoping to see anything. I'm at 3,700 calories on whoop. Um, and also I haven't eaten for a while, so I'm gonna get some food and then it's gonna be time to do some more things. So I'm gonna sign off for a while check back in this evening, see what else I can do in terms of uh, total calories burned, but that's it for now. Okay, so uh, I'm finally home after an incredibly long day. I've been exercising almost continuously since 8.30 this morning, and it's now um, 8.55 at night, so I'm exhausted, barely made it home. Um, I did yoga, I went for a bike ride, I hiked, I did a workout, um, as well as just other activities, just burning calories throughout the day. Um, and I still came up short. Uh, this wasn't a 10,000 calorie challenge, but I did want to see comparing the two tractors, which trackers, which one would, um, come up with most calories burned. And if that much exercise would put me, um, close to the threshold. And I still, I came in right around 5,000. So I can't imagine doing that, doing double that to hit, uh, 10,000 calories. Um, or even if either of these trackers would read anything close to it. Um, I did have a Sunto, uh, heart rate strap on for my bike ride and I'm waiting to see if that data actually uploaded or not um, to compare it to both of these wrist worn trackers um, but I've taken them off for now the Apple watch nearly died so I did have to take that off twice um, to charge it today just briefly and I tried to do as little as possible while it was charging but um, this is the end so I would say that both of these wrist worn devices are ultimately good for gathering data, giving you some points, looking at your recovery, looking at how active you actually are. Um, they're great for tracking how long your run is and so forth like that. But um, in terms of actual lab gathered data for um, heart rate measurements, HRV and so forth, there's a lot to be desired and the technology still has to improve. So something to look out for. Anyway, um, thanks for watching guys. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. More stuff going to be coming. Um, I'll be answering questions at the bottom. So thanks for watching. Get out there.